Pray with me real quick. Father God, we thank you for this day. Um, we pray that your Holy Spirit will just fill this place, God, this morning, and that uh, you will dwell with us during this um, time of worship, and then as uh, the speaker talks, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just be with us, and that uh, every person in this room, God, will push in and will be um, touched in some way by you, God, in your name. Amen. <laughs>
for this day and this opportunity that you've given us to just worship together as a school, Lord. I pray that we just won't take that for granted and that we just strive to be more like you as we go about our day. Amen. Thanks, guys. Okay, so how many of you guys brought your Bibles today? Ah, oh, much better. Thank you so much. Hey, great job, junior hires. Nice. Okay, so um, today uh, I've got a word for you guys that uh, I hope will help you understand a little bit more about God. So we, um, we believe that God is one God, but um, kind of three persons, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many of you guys have a hard time wrapping your mind around that sometimes? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, it's one of those things that we just kind of take by faith because I think our finite minds have a difficult time understanding something that's infinite like that. So, uh, but anyway, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Who's the Son? The Son is Jesus, right? Um, but today, I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about uh, the Holy Spirit. If you guys will turn in your Bibles to John 16, we're going to take a look at verses 7 through 11. Um, at, at my church, my pastor will give you the chapter and the, uh, the book and the chapter, and then he waits to give you the verse, which I guess is fine and dandy if you have a paper Bible, but I'm, I'm still waiting to press that last button for the verse on my phone deal, right? So I gave you guys the verse too. John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11. Awesome. Uh, Jesus says, but very truly I tell you, it is good for you that I am going away. Now, I got to just say, whenever I first read this, I'm like, wait a second. He's talking to the disciples, and he's saying, it's good for you that I go away. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, wait a second. These guys have been camping out next to the Son of God, God himself, for three years. And he says that it's good that he goes away. So there must be something that I don't understand, and hopefully he's fixing to tell me, and he does. He says, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can no longer see me. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. So what Jesus says is, I know it's been really great to hang out next to you guys. Walk on water, you know, miracles, all that business. But if I go, I can send the Holy Spirit to you. And he's going to uh, convince the world of sin. Uh, he's going to um, show forth God's righteousness. And... Um, you know, the devil is going to be standing condemned. Um, so it must be, there must be something to the Holy Spirit for Jesus to say, it's better for you to have the Holy Spirit than to have me here on the, the earth. Um, let's move in our Bibles now to Mark 1, 8. Mark 1, 8. This is John the Baptist talking. He's talking about Jesus. He says, I baptize you with water. John was baptizing people in water for, uh, to show that they had repented of their sins. He said, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was going to be baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. Um, let's look at Acts 2. We're going to look at three different verses in Acts 2. We'll start with verse 4. You guys know the second chapter of Acts is the whole cool story about the disciples waiting in the upper room for what Jesus had said, hey, guys, you guys go wait for the promise of the Father, okay? So we'll start in verse 4. Uh, it, it says, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then in verse 14, it says, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, 
Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. And then in verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So I know I just raced right through the second chapter of Acts. I recommend that you guys take time to read it all. But essentially what I want you to get out of this is that when the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, he changed, he changed from being a scared little man who ran away whenever the guards came to pick up Jesus, denied Jesus three times, and absolutely no boldness in his life at all, to someone who stood up in the middle of, of the city there, where the, the Holy Spirit had just fallen, preached, and 3,000 people got saved. Okay? So the Holy Spirit gave him the power to do that. Uh, now let's move to John 16. Should have actually held you, had you hold your place there because we're going to the same spot. We're just going to the next verse. John 16, 12 is where we're going to start. So Jesus has just said, hey, it's better for you that I go away. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so John 16, starting in verse 12, says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. So what Jesus is saying is, is that hey, I've got a lot of awesome, cool stuff that I want to tell you, but I, I, it wouldn't do any good because you're not going to get it until you have the Holy Spirit. And he says, but once you have the Holy Spirit, then he's going to guide you into all truth. Okay? And then the last verse I want you guys to turn to is Ephesians chapter 1. Does anybody recognize Ephesians 1 from anything we've done recently? It's, it is our camp verse, right? Actually, what started me thinking about talking to you guys today about the Holy Spirit was verses 13 and 14 of our camp, our, our uh, retreat verse. Because when I saw this, it gave me a new revelation uh, of, of the Holy Spirit that I wanted to share with you guys, all right? So this is the last two verses of Chad's, um, uh, of Chad's scripture that he used while we were on retreat. It says, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you were believed, I'm sorry, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. Okay, so when we believed, we were marked in Jesus. And I think Chad mentioned it was like a brand, that that word meant like a brand, uh, with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So I don't know how much you guys know about buying a house, but when you get ready to buy a house, usually you, you go and you say, oh, well, we really love your house. We'd like you to take it off the market. We, we want to be the ones to buy it. And in order for you to say, well, okay, I'll take it off the market, but I want to know that you're super serious about this whole deal. It's no problem. And they pay a down payment. Okay, they make a deposit. And, and uh, most of the time, it's a non-refundable deposit so that if they do decide to hit the road and go do something else, you at least are re compensated for the time that your house was off the market. Okay? What this is saying is, is that God promised all that cool stuff we saw in Revelation yesterday, about no more tears, no more crying, he's going to wipe away all pain. He promised all that. Have we received that yet? No. Probably some of you guys have experienced pain this week. But that is ahead of us. And Jesus said the down payment for that is the Holy Spirit. I really like the way it says it in the Amplified Version. Let me read you those two verses in the Amplified. In him, you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings of your salvation, and have believed in and adhered to and relied on him, were stamped with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. That spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance, the first fruits, the pledge and foretaste 
the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of his glory. Because he sent the Holy Spirit to us, that is our guarantee that he's going to do all the other things he said he would do. So, um, I don't know, I just, that to me was super exciting. Because the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He gives us strength and power to do the things that, that God's called us to do. And, and this verse tells us that he also is the down payment, the guarantee that God is going to do everything else he told us. Let's pray and head to class. Father, thank you for your word. And Father, I thank you for Jesus and what he did. And I thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to come and live in us, to give us the power to be obedient to the things you've called us to. And today, Lord, I thank you that he is the seal that guarantees that you're going to do everything else you promised. Help us to shine forth your glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. You're dismissed to go to class.